Professor Days. Uh, did we give you a title? Overlord. Overlord. <laughs> There's one. That's right. Overlord. Uh, who will be teaching us today about row your boat and the concepts of duality? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it is. It is tradition that we read the uh, mission and the purpose. So, fair. Board of Education, just in case you're wondering, is spelled B-O-R-E-D, Board of Education. That's an important fact. Important. Mission. The mission of the Board of Education is to promote a mature, a pure, peer learning environment oops, sorry, for all pupils and teachers to enjoy. We come together for the acquisition, application of knowledge, for social interaction, and the practice of peer listening skills. <laughs> yeah. And with the comprehension of this mission, we aim to actively promote the growth and prosperity of the Board of Education. Because we are a thing, we promote ourselves. <laughs> uh, the purpose of the Board of Education is to actively seek interesting and new topics to learn. Our unique each one teach one format, uh, through our unique each one teach one format, we choose members of the board to educate upon a topic of their choosing, which is why we are gathered here tonight for Mr. Lund's speech. So, uh, as we're enjoying this, keep in mind that it is entirely driven by our own members, much like NPR, and we need, in fact, you to be teaching things, and we are going to need somebody to teach, not this next coming week, because that's Easter, but the following week, so we'll talk about that stuff um, at the end. So, Overlord One, the floor is yours. Yeah! Woo! You want this, or you want me to? Sure. Non-duality 
uh, has a large history in a lot of Eastern uh, religious practices um, from Hinduism, especially the sub school, uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I believe it's Advaita or Advaita, um, Advaita Vedanta, uh, as, as well as uh, Sikhism, uh, Sufism, which is you know a, a, a branch off of Islam. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you're familiar with the precise names, but there are schools in uh, of Buddhism that have essentially sort of concept. Um, as well, in, in contemporary uh, Western circle, there is uh, some uh, Christian mysticism, as well as, um, uh, of course, miracles and some of the other um, books that have been written in that sort of field as well. Uh, so I'll be actually using most of most of my quotes will actually be based off of that that contemporary Western. Um, Thought of non-duality, which would be, of course, the miracles, um, Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament, as well as some. Um, oh no, I didn't put any. There's an, uh, there's a one guy, um, what's his name? Jiddu Krishnamurti. Uh, he was an Indian national, but he was raised in uh, England and came to America, and so he has a lot of that same sort of talks. But he comes from a transcendental background, as well as a lot of other people as well. Has this been lowering the impact time? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we're great. you're getting taller, actually. <laughs> uh, okay, so then, the concept of the non-duality that I wanted to introduce here is one of uh, infinity. And so I, I, I use the term infinity uh, because it's, it's um, more of a broader concept. It's more accepted as something that's just sort of vague instead of something that's more specific. And also, uh, uh, you see the brackets in most of those quotes. I, I took out religious words that were there and uh, instead substituted things like the infinite and finite instead, uh, just so that it doesn't get confusing and the confusion isn't there and that it's more of a consistent uh, message as well. Uh, and also, when, when you think of words like God, uh, you tend to associate a body with it or at least some sort of personhood with it, and so I try to I try to get rid of uh, preconceived notions as well. So just try to make it as much uh, of, of open-ended thing as I could. So uh, basically, non-duality, quote unquote, infinity is, uh, and so basically that infinity is, and then you, and then you're just quiet. There, there's nothing else that you can say uh, besides there is infinity. Um, and of course, I mean, we could get into the scientific truth of infinity and whatnot, and that's a whole different field. But uh, if, if you can think of infinity as something that is formless, shapeless, timeless, spaceless, everything less, you know, I mean, there's no limits, no bounds, no anything, then that would be what infinity is. Uh, and so, uh, infinity would be all that there is, and there could be and would be absolutely nothing else, because infinity would encompass all things, would um, be all things, but have no beginning, have no end, have no um, uh, no gap, no spaces, no uh, stopping point, no starting point, so, so on and so forth. So on, so forth. Uh, and so I say there's nothing apart from the infinite, uh, the infinite cannot create anything other than the infinite, you know, which just, would just create itself. It cannot create something contrary to what it is. Uh, there cannot be a, uh, this is an important part, there cannot be an infinite amount of finite things, because finite things are limited in nature, and so you cannot have an infinite amount of limited or finite things. Um, so that's something that you sort of dwell on. But, uh, and then, as well, space and time are measurements for limitation. So in one time, you are measuring a time, and the next time is a separate, different time that you are experiencing. You can think back towards the past that is a separate, different experience, and the future will be something different all, all together. So they're measurements of limitation. Uh, and most important, that they, they do not exist in non-duality because they are limitations or measurements of limitation, and limitation is obviously contrary to what we can be in. Uh, there you have some quotes here. Uh, the opposite of the infinite is the finite, but what is all encompassing can have no opposite. The original words there, the opposite of love is fear, but what is all encompassing can have no opposite. Uh, and so that the meaning would, would be that 
in the infinite there's love. That, uh, inf infinity is naturally defenseless because it would have nothing that it would be against, or it would have no fighting force against it. There would nothing, nothing be opposing it because it would be all that there was would be. So it would be since it would be all encompassing as well that there would be no no need to have anything else. Uh, and so that's that's why the term would be love and the view would be the opposite of love. Uh, so is that is that all is that all clear? Does anybody have any questions? Well, is thing. it clear? <laughs> it's thick. It's thick. So so what's duality then apart from the mind and the body? Like how is that different than everything you just said? So the difference then would be well that's sort of the thing that's fine. But oh. there, I mean there are two okay. traditions of duality. One would be the the Cartesian or you know, from Descartes would be the separation of the mind and the body. Uh, and that you could, that that is a, a thing actually in, in non duality is that is that your mind is actually something completely different. Not, but it, it would be considered your consciousness, it would be considered your thoughts. Uh, whereas Descartes was thinking that your thoughts and in, in your consciousness is something different than your body. So. But like how is, what is duality in terms of then I guess the opposite of all of this? Just everything that is finite is part of duality? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, we, we don't know or don't experience anything that is infinite. Like we cannot even fathom, we can't imagine, we can't understand anything. In other words, in our experience in the world and universe completely, there is nothing that is infinite. And so we have absolutely no concept. I mean, we can talk about it, but even that, like there's no concept, there's no understanding whatsoever about what mm -hmm. infinite is. Just a vague sort of. That's why you say infinity yeah. is ellipses because we don't know. Really, because we can't talk about it really. Oh, I think go down a little bit. Now, was this part in it? Go up. Yeah, go up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there. Uh, the infinite, therefore, is the only truth because there's nothing false. Because there, there's nothing that is not the infinite. And so the only truth. And I'm not. I'm not talking about worldly truth. I'm not talking about like physical truth or scientific truth. It's just, it's just something completely different. So it's sort of a broad-based understanding of what the truth would be. So that. Uh, if, if there is only infinity, then that, that is the only truth. And, and so therefore, the concept of something false doesn't even exist because there is only the truth. Uh, so, chew on that. Uh, so being the truth, there, therefore the infinite, infinity is therefore reality, and since there is nothing else but the infinite. So what does that make? Duality, and little, so life, death, hot, cold, physical, non physical, all that sort of stuff. What does that make it that makes it a dream? Um, um, so nothing real can be threatened because infinity, it can never be anything but itself. It will always be itself and will change. And then nothing unreal can then exist. So you're saying that because the only real way that we have to come to grips with things that are infinite is by describing them with finite terms, and that's not a possibility. Yeah, you're right. And that's actually, uh, do you have more? I do. Because of that, you are saying that our very finite world, our world full of things with beginnings and endings, is in fact not real. Okay, because that's what that's saying, I just want to make sure that that's how I got it. Now, just a, just a quick clarification there. It does not mean that you're not experiencing pain. It does not mean that you don't have a joyful life. It does not mean that you aren't feeling things and having experiences. But yes, it's not true. Can you explain what you mean about infinity being the truth? Because could it just as well be like the false? That, that's that's really like the why point. Why choose that? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. And so. Um, I'm sorry, let me go back to what I was going to say before you know, I was just that. Um, what was I going to say before? Was it Katy Perry? Really? Yeah, I was going to say Eric's like, I'm Katy Perry in my head, I can't think right now. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll get back to it, maybe it'll come back to my mind. But anyway, so in other words, uh, both are sort of true, or at least both seem true. 
So, in other words, um, in this world that we're experiencing, right, I mean, we have duality, right? Infinity is false, right? Because we, we can't prove it, we can't think of it. I mean, the, the, the only concept is this vague sort of abstract thing which has no meaning to us, right? I mean, the infinity is meaningless to us when we really, when we really think about it. You have to wake up, you have to go to work, you have to do this, you go to sleep. Nothing, n none of that has any sort of reflection of, of what the infinite. So in this world, you're right, it's completely meaningless. It has absolutely no meaning. And, so to tack on to what you're sort of saying, in this world, the infinite would be unreal. Right? Because nothing in this experience has any sort of reflection of what infinite would be. But, the truth is, is that Infinity being completely all-encompassing, having no limits, having no form, having no separation, having no starting, stopping point. I could just go on and on, right? Um, if if there's no absolutely limit to it whatsoever, then there's no part of it that could not be true. I mean, it's hard to describe that. Could not. Um, if that's all there is, then that's all there is, and there's nothing apart from it. So therefore, infinity is the only truth. It's like the ultimate, ultimate truth. And therefore, there is no, there's no response. Then you something that's all right. Well, I'll, I'll let, I'm sorry, I'll let you. Uh, Ladies. Go ahead. Ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what I'm wondering, though, is, is, um, because what we have is finite, does that prove there is infinite? Or is there also some truth to thinking there is only the finite? Well, both, actually. Yeah, you're, I think you're right. Uh, so I think um, the argument then is, what, if, what is this world if it is not reality? Um, so to add on to what the, the infinite is, if reality is formless, spaceless, timeless, then this universe is not reality. The world is an illusion. Dream. And the quote here says, From knowledge and perception, respectively, two distinct thought systems arise, one of duality and one of non-duality, uh, uh, which are opposite in every respect. In the realm of knowledge, no thoughts exist apart from the infinite, because it is completely all-encompassing. The world of perception, however, is made by the belief in opposites and separate wills, in perpetual conflict with each other and with the infinite. So that, And that's important, that uh, this world of perception is, is in, in perpetual conflict with the infinite. Uh, what perception sees and hears appears to be real because it permits into awareness only what conforms to the wishes of the perceiver. This leads to a world of illusions, a world which needs constant defense, precisely because it is not real. And, and that's that's a that's a that's a that's a big, big thing that you want at the very end, though. But because because this is not real, that's where defense mechanisms come into play. That's where um, um, I mean, when you think about it, that's why every war started, that's why everybody has conflict, not only with other people, but within themselves. When you think about it, you have two, two selves within your own mind, one which does crazy selfish things and has all these sick desires and whatnot, and then one which is constantly hating that self, which is, you know, don't do those things to me, and so it's a constant. And so um, this is just saying that the world of duality is one in which there's constant conflict because there's one section against another section constantly having to validate itself. Whereas the infinite is just there. It, it doesn't need any validation, it doesn't need any defense, it doesn't need any, anything to just prove it. Because nothing can make it. So no, we can just prove it. We'll just hold on with it. Anybody have any questions? When it comes in the this? bracket where it says with, with the conflict with each other and with the infinite, huh? did you replace love again with the infinite? No, if you replace God. God, okay, yeah. with God. Yeah, yeah. So the world's perception. Oh, yeah, <coughs> yeah, so the, uh, the world's perception, mm -hmm. however, is made by the belief in opposites and separate worlds in perpetual conflict with each other and with God. But if, if the infinite, like you said before, doesn't have any conflict against it, then it's just a perception of conflict. So it's a perception, so it's really, okay, perception of conflict. No conflict in truth, just yeah. a perception okay. of conflict. So it's, it's keeping itself going. Its own, its own conflict of itself is continuing the conflict of itself, which continues to make it seem real. Yes. <laughs> even though in truth it's not even going up. Yes, but yes. So a constant defense is necessary for those things because you have to prove to yourself constantly that it is real. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Yeah. Scroll down. So, 
practical applications of non development. <laughs> That's what does it all mean? <laughs> so the argument then is infinity may logically be reality. I mean, you can argue it, right? But I still got problems. Uh, how does that help at all? And how is this how is this helpful in any sort of way, shape, or form? Uh, and when you think about it, in a sense, it isn't, right? Because like I said, you still got your problems. You still have that jerk at work who doesn't want to work with you, and you still have to find a way to work, with, right? Regardless. Uh, and so, uh, one way, one helpful thing is when it, it is thinking of, of your sleeping dreams, so that when you're actually falling asleep, you have these crazy things, when you're actually experiencing it, and some people can actually get to the point where they have lucid dreams, but when you're actually dreaming these things, you actually think it's real. Often, I mean, you wake up and you go, oh, okay, now that's just a dream. But when you're dreaming it, you think, holy shit, I'm actually flying. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm actually floating, and... Why are, am I not running very fast? You actually believe that mm -hmm. you're not running very fast, you know, and that they're going to get you. Mm -hmm. um, and so all those sort of things are are very, very real when you're actually experiencing it. And that's a that's a, a same sort of analogy or metaphor when it comes to this sort of same sort of thing is that when you're experiencing it, when you're when your experience of duality is over, then you'll just wake up and realize, oh, it was just a dream. Whereas in here, everything is just so serious. Um, and, and, but often, you also wake up from your dream and actually hold these grudges, hold these you know, truths of, of fear within yourself to be real. And so when your coworker is in your dream making fun of you, then you actually go to work the next morning and are angry at that person, right? And when you think about that, I mean, that's it's pretty silly. I mean, even to the point of being sort of delirious or insane, because you're holding a grudge not against that person, but against yourself, right? I mean, you have created that grudge within yourself through your dream and are somehow projecting it or displacing it onto another person, which they have done nothing in truth, right? Nothing in reality, and I'm, I'm just speaking physical reality. They've done nothing in this in this world, but you have dreamt it up <laughs> and now hold it against them. So, uh, next point. The world including you and all that, even your thoughts, is the denial of this infinite reality. And, uh, and so while you're actually physically in a dream state, um, it's a, that, that same sort of thing. When you're dreaming, when you're asleep, you're denying your waking knowledge of the world, right? Because you can fly, because dragons are chasing you, right? And so what you're doing then is you're actually denying the entire world, and you're making all, of, all this fancy stuff up. And you, if you can lose a dream, then you can do whatever you want. And, same time, but at the same time, you're happy. You're having to substitute that new reality of a dream with your actual waking mind. So, um, so then, using your own sleeping dreams as a model for detachment and defenselessness, the world then becomes a peaceful experience. And so, that's 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 probably the biggest. I should have put a little air on this or something like that. Um, so this all becomes then a state of mind, and not and not a state of body, um, because if you, if you think about the infinite being completely defenseless because there's nothing that it can do, and this is, a, this is a really big one, because a lot of people think, that, oh, if this is a dream, well, I can just do whatever I want. I can go and I can murder somebody, or I can go and I can rob something and without any worry, right? Because then I just wake up and the dream would be over, right? Well, uh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, and actually, but absolutely not. Uh, and by, by definition, the infinite is completely all-inclusive, all-encompassing, because it, that's all there is, or there ever could be. You thus have all you could possibly need to have a peaceful mind. Feeling uh, the need to do whatever you want would be an expression that what you have is not good enough, uh, and your peace could come from something outside of yourself. And so, in other words, if you think that that, that old lady with the purse has something that you don't have and that you would be happy or happier taking it from her, then that goes to show that you believe that the infinite is not real and that there is no infinity and that you are a broken thing and need to be fixed or healed by that purse that you're stealing from her. And thus you are in conflict with what infinity is.
Could that tie then into the to your other analogy of being shot? You know, like if you feel like you need to stitch up the, the you know the wound in your chest, is that not also a kind of rationalizing of the present world? Like you need to do this, or you will die. I mean, it's also a need too, right, to make yourself better. So, what is the differentiation between those two things? Well, yeah, that's a very good question, and and uh, it's you not it would be stupid to deny that you are experiencing what you're experiencing. And that's that's simply what, what it is. The, in, the infinite doesn't change whether you get shot and you die, or whether you get shot or you go to a hospital. Like, so what do you think? Well, that's the thing, though. You are in a body, and while you are experiencing a body, bodies get shot, and if the body needs to keep working, then it needs to be healed, right? And that's, it, it, in other words, it doesn't matter, though, in a sense. You could get shot, and you could die, and you could die in a completely peaceful mind, right? And that would be fine. Or you could die, and you could uh, get stitched up. I'm sorry, you could get shot, you could get stitched up, and you could be healed, and then you could be completely fine. You could be in a peaceful state of mind. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. What, what does matter, then, is what you want to share with others. If you want to share, through your death, that you are peaceful person, and that this doesn't affect you, or if you want to share through continuing to live and to heal, that other people have the ability to heal their own mind through such similar experiences. Oh, right. So, the beginning of the song. I used Row, Row, Row as the three three different stages of your, the development of your life, uh, um, uh, which ultimately lead to the merrily, 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 hopefully. Uh, so the first row it's, I'm, I'm thinking this not only as, as physical stages of development, but mental stages of development. So as, as you first dip your row into, into the water, the or, <laughs> did, I, did I put that one? No. As you first dip your paddle or your oar into the water, it's your, it, that's your first experience. You know, maybe you're building up your ego, which you need to do you know, in order to function in the world. You need to learn the laws of the universe. You need to learn that when you cry, you get you get fed, or you get burped, or you need to get changed. You know, and you learn that when uh, the big big guy who's been traumatized, or a big boy that's been traumatized all his life by his family, that you want to maybe avoid him because he might take punches on you. You know, I mean, those are things that you know you just have to learn, and that's that's your first row. It's often difficult mentally, filled with dread and fear of the future. Because what you're learning is that this world is filled with pain, this world is filled with anguish and with a whole bunch of egos trying to get by uh, and not always doing so in the kindest or gentlest or effective way. Second row then uh, is one of development, one of maturity and experience of, of, of knowing what your place is, uh, of knowing how the world works. There's a phrase by uh, Dr. Krishnamurti, the, the, the guy who uh, was Indian nationalist, but you know, raised in England, and he said, uh, being well adapted to a Sikh society is not an achievement, something like that. Mm. Uh, in other words, say, even though you are well adapted to the world, they know how to, how to do it, which is a very complex, very mentally challenging thing to do. You know, we think of all the things you have to do, not only in the world, but having to work in mind to make sure you're doing it effectively is, is very, very complicated. Um, but it ultimately comes down to the question, is this really the way my mind is supposed to work, or ultimately I'm not happy here, or I came to the understanding myself where eventually I was just one day, this is very strange. This whole, what I'm experiencing, like this world, it's, it's just really strange. Uh, and so it's the same sort of thing. Many people get stuck in their cynicism and doubt um, and just become grumps or, you know, get really defensive and have a lot of defense mechanisms to try to get by. And they think that that is wise, even though they still hold the wisdom over other people. And so even though they think they're getting by in the world, they're still sort of stuck in the system, in a sense. Um, uh, uh, adolescent development, uh, when you're growing up, uh, or at least in a healthy relationship with your family and whatnot, uh, you're generally a pretty optimistic kid. You know, if you like things, you get by. Then when you reach a certain stage, your concrete or formal stage of, of psychological development, you get to the point where you understand the negative or the cynicism of things. And you start to get to the point where, you know, 
anti-authoritarian or, you know, I don't like to go to school, I don't like work, I don't like my bosses, I don't like my parents, and you start to become more independent. But if you don't get past that point, then you just get to be a very cynical and very skeptical person. Ultimately, to, the purpose of, of, of being a successful person in the world then is to, is to transcend both of those so that you're not ideally optimistic, you're not overly pessimistic, but you understand how things work and you can function. The third world then is one of completion, of peace, of resolution, of understanding. The, the world is not changed for self-interest, but the perspective of the mind is changed, so that the world is no longer perceived as a threatening place. You are in the world, but yet you embody or reflect that truth, that infinity, which would be love. You are a very loving person. You don't have a lot of self-interest. You no longer have attachments to attach for. Not to say that you don't, but they're not as big of a deal. You sort of transcend that. Um, and then, I like that. Seek not to change the world, choose to change your mind about the world. Which is not to say that if somebody's being loved in front of you, you, you don't go and save them. <laughs> just think it's not that. No, this is a <laughs> it's just a dream. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it would be it would be cruel, and it would be denying the infinite if you didn't go and help somebody. Mm-hmm. Right, right. It would be, you know. But the point is that don't seek to change the external to be a peaceful person. Instead, change your mind, and your mind will be peaceful. Be peaceful. But you, you would say something. Uh, well, kind of a question that goes with this. It's been struggled with pretty much every religion and philosophy ever. It's like. Well, so if you have the infinite, then what is the point of the finite? Why even have it there in the first place? Why all this hedonistic struggle and anguish when, you know, the infinite is in itself? Like you said, what we're striving for should be. So why have all this other stuff in the first place? What's the um, origin of it? I mean, in a sense, that question, it doesn't really have an answer. Because uh, the question is the answer in itself. Because you come to the point where uh, when you ask that question, then you no longer see the validity in it, um, but that's uh, that's in a, also in a sense saying the same question is why do I have to put up with this shit if I could just be in the infinite? Well, but if uh, we, in other words, but but in the very very root of that question is saying that I'm not happy where I am and something needs to change and something else is the problem. Uh, so well, duality is the problem and that needs to change. Uh, but just it, as a pupil of the board, I'm just advocating, you know, a good discourse and just making. Oh no, it's quite a, no, that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, uh, <laughs> but but the thing is, the thing is that, that <laughs> duality is not a problem in the infinite because there's nothing that could be threatening, right? Mm-hmm. So duality is there's there's nothing wrong about this world. You know, if it's completely neutral and all the meaning is projected onto it, and so there's nothing wrong with duality. Um, so, in other words, you, you put it as illusion. There's yeah. nothing wrong with it, but it's just not real. Yeah, it's just not So why have the illusion? Well, that's an impossible question to answer. Because we are of the illusion. Right. So how could we possibly answer that? Yeah. Okay, yeah, and this is, I can get through this pretty quickly. Um, um, ro- ro- the, the boat then, you would think, would be the, the body, the body going down the stream. But uh, I'm, I'm using it actually as your mind. That your mind is the stream would be the world and your worldly experience, right? And that your body, or I mean, sorry, the boat being your mind is just going along and observing it as it's going along and, and experiencing it and feeling it as it as it goes along. But it, um, it's ultimately not not your body. So that's just sort of getting to the next part. Uh, oh, I never did get that. I'm never upset by a fact, but by an interpretation of a fact. That's a big thing. Um, Truth is real in its own right, and to believe in truth, you do not have to have do anything. And so that's another thing. To intellectualize it, it's actually you do something. So in order to believe in truth, you do not have to do anything. Which means that people who are crazy are just as much in the truth as somebody who is more sane. Uh, it's all or nothing. Everybody, everything is part of it, or nothing. Uh, understand that you do not respond to anything directly, but to your interpretation of it. Your interpretation thus becomes a justification for the response, and it's really important as well. Uh, that is why analyzing the motives of others is hazardous to you. If you decide that someone is really trying to attack you or desert you or enslave you, you will respond as if he had actually done so, having made this very good to you. Uh, and another quote below it. Oh, so you interpret errors to your power, and you've done this to all the way. 
and this is all three different things repeating the same thing. Each one merely interprets without knowledge, but mistakes its interpretation for knowledge. Everything you seem to experience, you seem to experience the filter of your mind. Um, uh, oh, and this is one thing I wanted that I really like this quote. What the world is is but a fact. Uh, you cannot choose what this should be, but you can choose how you would see it and how you would react to it. And that's 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 a that's a big thing. And so you don't. I mean, be 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 in the world and be a part of it, um, and don't deny it. You know, I, I think that's a big thing when you think about the world or the universe as an illusion. Is that it, is that you, it's something you have to deny? You don't deny it. You engage in it fully and participate in it actively. But uh, just know it's not true. I mean, it's a fact that you're experiencing it. Just it's not true. Okay, so that's a big thing. The boat is your mind, and it's not actually your body. Okay, gently down the stream. Uh, okay, so ultimately, so how do you row your boat? Uh, or how do you forgive all the untrue and unreal thoughts in your mind? And you know what I'm saying? Gent gently with kindness. Uh, I think there's Plato or be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Everybody's in the same boat, if you could sort of think, every in boat as mind. Everybody's in the same thought process or mind craziness or insanity, right? So since everybody's experiencing it, be compassionate and kind and merciful because everybody's experiencing it. And so there's no difference between you and what I was talking about with Lena the other night, how she, if somebody showed fear, uh, she would bark at them as a way of her projecting her fear onto another person and finding it fearful. Uh, and so or she saw the fear as something frightful. Uh, so, be, you know, it, it's extremely important that if, if people who are non-dual speak of detachment, but detachment with complete and utter love for all things, so that you are not um, wanting to get something out of somebody, but instead that you are um, giving to all. And that you're not only giving to one person, and this is not a physical thing, because I give stuff to one person at a time, but you give love in your mind to every, everything and everybody. No exception. One thing that uh, Course in Miracles talks about consistently is that uh, you cannot go to heaven if you don't bring everybody with you. And so if you actively choose to not um, um, bring somebody into heaven with you, then you're willingly and actively choosing for them to experience an infinite eternity of hell and pain. If you want them to experience that instead. You may not say that with your words, but that's ultimately what you were wanting to experience because you do not want them have an infinite understanding of love and infinite experience of love. Uh, so that's definitely something uh, in, in your worldly understanding of how to be kind and compassionate, you have to do it for everybody. If you're not doing it for everybody, and if you're excluding somebody, then you're willingly wanting them to have an experience of pain or of hatred or of unkindness, and that you're, you want that for them. Um, so that's definitely something. Since the, the infinite has no opposite, therefore nothing to defend itself against, including you, kindness and gentleness are just reflections of the characteristics of the infinite that embody defenselessness, total inclusivity. And what I mean by defenselessness is not that, that when somebody is going to shoot you, that you just go like this and just accept the bullets in your body. Um, um, and it's also not to say that, you know, people who are criminals shouldn't go to jail and shouldn't, you know, get punished or even be put to death through the death penalty or anything like that. It's merely to say that, that your mind does not have to be affected by it. You don't have to put up mental defense mechanisms to protect yourself from things that happen in the world. Um, and if you just, uh, it's, surely, it's surely good advice to tell you not to judge what you do not understand. No one with a personal investment is a reliable witness. For truth to him has become what he wants it to be. And that's, I mean, that's just obvious. If you are willing to perceive and appeal for help as what it is, um, it is because you are unwilling to give help and to receive it. Uh, and so that's really good. If you are unwilling to see somebody who, like, I mean, somebody who's traumatized when they're a kid and then becomes a pedophile when they're an adult, right? Uh, obviously, that's that's a maladaptive behavior that needs to be addressed in the world, right? Because that's just obvious. Maybe the most loving thing that they need to do is to go put in jail for the rest of their life or to be put into a therapeutic experience, you know, or being rehabilitated and whatnot. But ultimately, what 
comes down to is that that person, in their in their understanding of the world, is being a pedophile and, and doing the things that they do, that is a call for help because they 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 have failed in being peaceful and so they need your help to sort of get that understanding. Uh, and so if you are not willing, if you're unwilling to perceive an appeal for help, that's what it is. It's because you are unwilling to give help. And so, if you do not want to see that person as, as a need for help, then you're actually saying, I don't want to help you, or, same going with girls, same with heaven, and whatnot. If you do not want to bring somebody to heaven, it's because you actively want them to go to hell. Um, and that's, that's a big thing that's happening in your mind. <coughs> um, any questions about where we're at so far? Alright. Uh, defense mechanisms, I just wanted to get some actual defense mechanisms. Um, and these are just really good to know because they're helpful. Let's go let's go up a little bit more. Um, oh, and this is just one good. Non-duality and infinity have nothing to do with your body, only with the expressions of love or calls for love from your mind, or it has only to do with your mind. So most of what I'm saying may seem like it, it applies to what the body is or what the world is, but it, it's only with your mind. If you've gone on to that, okay, go up a little bit more. Up, yeah. No, I mean, I'm sorry, down. Yeah. Yeah, just so we, we get all the bold stuff. Okay, so these are really good things to know, and just to catch yourself doing if you ever are, if you, if you do it, just catch yourself doing it. Uh, so projection is a big thing, taking your guilt and anger, and then putting it onto somebody else, who has nothing to do with your guilt and anger or your feelings. So, um, I mean, that's really, uh, and that's, that's everything, anything physical. So when you get upset with the computer and you want to punch the computer, Fist right through that computer. That's nothing to do with the computer, right? It's the only the only thing is that you are upset with the computer. You are upset with the computer. It's not the computer. Um, so, I mean, when you come up with the problem in the world, just fix it or try to fix it. Nothing to do with it. Reaction formation. This is a really good one because this is not something that most people realize, and you see it everywhere, especially in politics. This is everywhere in politics. Uh, a form of denial that emphasizes the opposite of what you believe. Telling your boss you love your job and you really hate it. I'm not, I'm not afraid of heights. Yeah, I'll go lunch and I'm you know, definitely afraid of heights. You know, you're just denying it, right? Or, um, um, I mean, if, is that all clear? Everybody understands sort of what reaction information is? It's everywhere. Catch yourself doing it and also see if you can catch other people doing it. I mean, don't blame them for it. But just see when it happens because it is the everywhere. It's really interesting. How are you feeling? Fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, repetition compulsion is, the, you see this especially with people in relationships, is that they go from one person to another person to another person because they keep thinking that they'll get something that they really want out of that relationship, but really what they're trying to do is just take instead of give. And so, repression is obviously Thing. This dissociation is more of a psychotic sort of thing. Uh, losing track of time itself is not really I mean, it's, it's a normal thing that everybody does anyway. But this is more of an of a intense form of denial that you're so traumatized by what's happening to something that you actually physically de deny it, that it's happening. And thus you deny yourself. So, um, And then displacement. Sort of like displacement is projection but with two people. And so it's sort of with dream. This displacement is a big dream thing. So that when you dream something uh, about um, Jerry kicking me in the shin, in the dream, I'm sorry. And then, and then when I wake up, I get really upset with him. Right? So that in that sense, that's displacement. Uh, or any angry thoughts directed at one person but taken up and something else. So obviously, it, instead of one person, it'd be, it'd be the most sleeping people. Is that all clear? So I just want to I just want to put those out because those are all really helpful. Mm -hmm. At least really helpful for me. And so when you actually recognize that you, you're doing those things, then you can you don't have to blame yourself. Just recognize that you're doing it and trying not to do it the next time. And it, that's a really helpful thing because um, you know, just be honest with yourself and be honest with other people, and then you can sort of see how. Um, with going about your daily life, letting go and forgiving all things that seem to make you fearful and upset. Being aware of your emotions and inner feelings when they appear. They don't always appear. You don't always have, you know, it often feels like you're the victim of your mind, right? That sometimes you're doing such horrible things and you hate yourself. And then suddenly you have a moment you're like, oh, oh, I don't want to do that.
do that anymore. And then, but it seems sort of like out of your control at the same moment. So just when you recognize you're doing that, be part of it. Um, and then do things out of mutual and shared interest. Be compassionate and kind in your approach. And then uh, when you are compassionate and kind, and you don't, are you doing things out of mutual interest? Because you're part of that mutual interest? Then your needs will be met, and you can't help but be happy. Um, especially know that you are no longer a victim of what you see if you choose not to be one. So your victimization is your choice, in a sense. Not to say, again, that this is a physical body thing, this is a mind thing, right? And so you can get mugged, and you are a victim of a mugging, right? But this is to say that after you are mugged, and after you let... After you deal with your upset mind and your anger at that person, then you have the choice to let it go. You have the choice to forgive that person and see them as, as equal with you and ultimately in need of love instead of something that needs to be destroyed, somebody that needs to be punished and, and, and sent into an eternal hell for the reasons that you feel they need to be. You know? um, so it's, it's totally a mind thing. It's not a physical body thing. Uh, and so when you, have, you are totally in control, of seeing yourself as a victim or not. And so you would then have the choice to not be a victim of things, to not be mentally affected by things. Um, and then peace is impossible to those who look on war. Peace is inevitable to those who offer peace, obviously. Because when you give it, then you actually know a certain world for yourself. Um, I like this. It is not the world that makes peace impossible. It is the world you see that is impossible. And that's finished. Uh, oh, I didn't read the quote above, but if, if you all read that, that's, it just goes that. Um, yeah, joy is the inevitable result of gentleness. Gentleness means that fear is now impossible and what could come to interfere with joy. The open hands of gentleness are always filled. Are always filled. They are sure that your beloved must be safe. Joy goes with gentleness as surely as grief tends attack. And this is, again, this is not physical attack. This is mental attack. This is seeing as somebody else as the problem seeing somebody else's your mental problem. Right. I think we're almost done here. Uh, oh, I, I would love this. Go up a little bit if you don't mind. Oh, yes, this is a finish of it. Yet, yet, has, no, yet, yet has, the, <laughs> has the judgment of infinity on this distorted world redeemed it and made it fit to open peace. Again, the brackets, it was, was that, uh, God's judgment. But, you know, I'm going to try not to get religious in the sense of it. Yet has this disorder of redeemed that made it fit to open peace. And peace descends on it and joy is answered. Peace now belongs here because the knowledge of, of infinity has entered. What else but infinity turns hell to heaven merely by being what it is. It gets into that sort of understanding of infinity. Um, now the question is different. Is no longer can peace be possible in the world, but instead is it now is it now impossible that peace could be absent here? No. Because in Europe connecting to that understanding of the infinite rather than the definition of the finite which would just be a constant conflict, or at least duality. Or at least if it's peaceful here, it's temporary. That's the thing, that you'll have wonderful experiences in the world, obviously, but it's temporary. And that's the thing, and that eventually, ultimately, it ends. Um, whereas the, the infinite, it doesn't end. So, so um, alright, let's wrap it up in conclusion. In conclusion. Uh, be kind to those, yeah, okay, you know, your goal is inner peace, regardless of your guilt and self-destructive behaviors. So even if you are self-destructive, your goal, you're doing so because you think it will bring you peace. If you are taking stuff from somebody else, you're doing so because you, you think it will give you peace. So everything you do in this world, whether it, whether it is meant for that intention, or whether it's completely self-destructive and crazy, it's all for the same reason. Everybody thinks they're doing what they're doing, the I would like to say something not as a member of the board, but as a friend. Uh, I thought you did a really good job, especially with a, everybody's you know conceptions of their own worldview and introducing this completely different thing. We grilled you with some questions, but uh, we answered it well. So. Thank you.
Yeah, yeah the projector does get very hot. <laughs> well done, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, okay, so we didn't have... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so we do have uh, the, the things that we just have to do. Uh, the next board, let me get the date, will be April... The 14th. Correct, yeah, that is it. Uh, so April 14th, here at the 506... Uh, we are going to need to have, no, it's the 15th, it's April 15th, right? Uh, we are going to need someone else to speak on is the topic of your Kelsey choosing. Kelsey wanting to go at that time? Because she was technically on the dock. Yeah. She should. She got she nervous. Did she, is that why she I don't know, she was sick. Oh. Well, do we, I'll is, see, I'll ask her. vomit involved, that's all I know. I, I would be I would be hesitant to have someone sign up without their being here to affirm it. <laughs> okay, then let's. Can we work it out via the Facebook? And see we could. the Facebook, or you could call. So not everybody has Facebook. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Is there is there anyone here who oh. has something that they definitely want to speak? No. <laughs> 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 oh, Mike. Shelley. I did not for that reason. <laughs> 